Okay, good morning. My name is Clayton Bagwell. I'm with the NERSC User Engagement Group. I work in account and allocation support. Um, if you have problems with your passwords or MFA or trying to get logged in, you'll probably talk to either myself or my partner Mark, uh, Mark here. Um, so we'll just go through this real quick because so, I'm assuming most of you already have accounts. So there's two type of types of accounts that we have at NERSC. We've got uh, your personal user account. Um, this is your uh, login or username. Um, it provides uh, authentication and authorization. Um, last year when we had a uh, more diverse uh, set of computers, um, you might have authorization to get on one computer and not on another, but now that we're down to just Cori, that's it. <laughs> and HPSS, of course. Um, <coughs> uh, you can request an account on your own uh, if you don't already have one, or the principal investigator of um, <coughs> the project that you need to be associated with um, can add, uh, add an account for you. If you already have an account and you need to belong to multiple projects, um, the way to do that is to have the PI add your existing account to the project rather than creating a brand new one. Uh, there are three different types of roles right now that we have. Uh, the principal investigator, uh, a project manager, which is sometimes referred to as a PI proxy. Uh, this person is allowed to do things for the PI because PIs are too busy to do it themselves. Um, and of course, the users. The second type of account we have are the project allocation accounts, <coughs> also known as a repository or repo. This is like a bank account. This is how you pay for the time that you're using on the, on the computers or the storage that you're using in HPSS. Um, it's just government funny money, so don't think of it as like a real bank account, but it's just to keep thing, help keep things um, uh, fair for everyone. Um, <coughs> you get a, uh, you get a, a quota uh, within each project uh, of how much time you can use, how much stored space you can use. That's managed by the PI or the, uh, the project managers. Um, and if, of course, if you're on the computers, you have at least one repo. Um, and you can't have more if you belong to uh, different projects. Then depending upon what programs you're running, uh, you'll have to specify what repo you want it to run against. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, so the NERSC Information Management website, oh, lovingly known as NIM. Uh, it's been around for almost 20 years, and it's slowly fading into the um, sunset, and it's going to be replaced, but that's somebody else's story. Um, this is where you would go to check things like your, um, the balance that you have um, in, the, in your repo that you have access to. Uh, if you want to change your password, if you want to change the shell that you're using on the machines, um, updating your contact information to make sure you get the weekly newsletter that we send out to keep you informed of everything important going on. Um, inside NIM, um, at the top we have these uh, blue drop-down menus um, that will allow you to do the actions, like the actions menu on the, the right-hand side, that's where you do things like change your default uh, login shell, <coughs> generate an HPSS token, uh, which is a special kind of a soft token that you need to use uh, to easily access HPSS uh, using utilities such as HSI. And then below that are the, uh, on the yellow bar, are other ta are the, your personal information tabs such as the account usage, um, the Unix groups you belong to, your contact information, etc. And that needs to be updated to include the MFA tokens that we are now using. Uh, this is an old screenshot of the account usage uh, summary. Um, this person belonged to three different projects or three different repos. You can see how much time they've used, uh, how much they're allowed from, does this show up here? Probably not. Oh yeah, how much they're allowed to use from each repository and the balance of time that they have left. Um, you also see over here that this particular repo is their default repo, and also this is like the base one. Um, there's a whole 
strategy behind if you run out of time in one repo, you automatically get reassigned to another one as your default. Uh, but that's uh, beyond the scope of this talk. OK, um, our policies are all set out in our appropriate use policy form. Um, if you requested an account through the self-service um, account request page, um, this form was incorporated into that uh, page. So you got a lot of nice reading to do to see what you can and cannot do. And then you have to attest to say that, yes, I will follow the rules. Uh, one of those is uh, passwords. Um, you we're still requiring people to change their passwords every six months. Um, <coughs> since we've included multi-factor authentication, there's been a lot of discussion about changing that, but it's still in the discussion phase, so you're still stuck with changing your password every six months. Uh, the big no-nos are don't share your password and don't email your password to us saying, hey, I changed my password, because then we'll have to go and lock your account until you change your password again. Um, with your log, if you're trying to log on to Cori and you've had problems trying to remember exactly what your password is or you have your caps lock down and the password gets munged up, you have five tries to get it correct before you're locked out. However, the nice thing is, if you do actually remember what your password is, you can log into NIM. That will clear the login failures for Cori and then you can go back and log in correctly. Password rules, uh, we require that you have at least uh, eight characters in your password. And those characters have to be composed of uppercase and lowercase letters, a number or more, and one or more special characters. Uh, we have a few examples here of some good passwords and a bad password. And then a little hint on creating your own password. If you select a phrase like, computer security is very important for nurse users, and you take the first letter of each one of those words, compose a little phrase out of it, and then munge up the characters so that they meet the uh, required upper or lower case number of special characters. You have a fairly good password. Or at least we used to think so. And that's another story. OK, so as I mentioned earlier, multi-factor authentication, once you've got a password set, um, you can before you have your multi-factor authentication token created, you can log into NIM with just your username and password. And then you get a nice little message that says, OK, you can't log on to the computers until you create an MFA token. And we give you a little link that takes you to the proper tab so that you can create the MFA token. Um, when you're creating the MFA token, you're going to need some type of one-time password generator, such as a Google Authenticator, Authy, Duo, something like that. Um, you probably want to set that up either on your laptop, your desktop, your phone before you create the token uh, because once you do create the token in NIM, you get a one-time um, picture of a QR code or whatever secret phrase you need to put into some software to get the two to link up so that the one-time password generator can create your OTP or MFA OTP one-time password. Um, we also have a link here that takes you to the page um, uh, on, our web, or on our main website on how to go through this whole process of setting up the multi-factor authentication. And this is that uh, picture that I was speaking of, the QR code after this person created their token. If you have a phone, you can just take a picture of it. If you have a software on a desktop, you have to copy this secret that's redacted here for some reason. Uh, put that into the software and uh, to link everything together. OK, so the allocations process. Yes? Um, I just have a quick question on that. So I was just on the NIM website, and I noticed that there's an SSHP tab. Um, were you, like, just giving, just me giving you my public address, did HTTP do anything for me? Not anymore. So before we went to multi-factor authentication, we used to allow you to put in your public SSH key and the, it, those would get pushed out to the, the computers so that you could use SSH um, to log in. But now that we've gone to the MFA, that is really doesn't do you any good anymore. You can put it in there if you want, but it makes you feel better, but yeah, it'll be ignored. <laughs> okay, so 
um, computing allocations or resource allocations, um, the repository. Uh, they are requested through the Energy Research Computing Allocations process, uh, affectionately known as ERCAP. Um, the PI of a project uh, can log into ERCAP um, and start a request for um, a, a new project. Um, they can then also designate uh, what we call an authorized preparer and give that person permission to go in and fill out the actual form uh, for all the information we need to request a project. Um, renewing uh, projects um, are done every year, usually in late summer, um, around August or so, August, September. We request such information as uh, science objectives, um, the approach that you're using, your resource requirements, like how many hours you need, how much storage you need, um, some justification for those types of resources and such. Um, all of the requests are reviewed by um, the DOE Office of Science Program uh, Allocation Managers. Um, the renewal process is kind of strung out because our allocation year starts in January, but we have to get all this done beforehand to get through the whole approval process. And then the awards for the projects are announced usually in December. Um, <coughs> we have a classification of project called the exploratory, uh, also used to be known as a startup allocation, uh, usually about 100,000 hours um, that you can request a, a project and get 100,000 hours um, to get things set up on um, the nurse computers and get things running uh, so that you can go into like full-scale production. Um, those are also um, reviewed and approved by the DOE uh, managers. Um, but that at least gives you a toehold onto the NERSC systems and get you started to a larger project. So <coughs> even with the comings and goings of the different computers, we have about 9.23 billion hours that we allocate every year, or at least for this year. 80% uh, of that time is uh, set aside specifically for the DOE Office of Science programs to use and allocate for their different um, projects. 10% uh, goes to the Oscar Leadership Computing Challenge, um, which has, it has a start time of July and then runs through June of the next year. Uh, but the request for the ALCC projects is done through uh, a different request process and they just tell us who gets the awards. And then we have a 10% that's used by what we call the Director's Reserve. That's for like our internal projects like NESAP and also for uh, education and uh, staff use. So we encourage people to use their, plan out the usage of their computing time throughout the year. Um, don't wait until the, the last minute in December to try and get all your time used up. And because what we do is we, every quarter we have what we call um, uh, quarterly reductions, allocation reductions. Uh, we'll look at how much was allocated to the project, how much they've used by a certain point of time. In this case, July, July 10th will be our next allocation reduction. And if your usage hasn't met a certain um, threshold, uh, we take some of that time back, give it back to DOE, and they give it back to somebody else. Um, this is only for the DOE mission projects, so people that have the ALC allocations or Director's Reserve Exploratory Education, uh, they're exempt, so they get to breathe a sigh of relief. Okay, so we've got two ends of the spectrum. People who've got an allocation, they're not using enough time, so we take it back from them. Then we've got people who use all their time at the very beginning, and they run out of time. Um, as I said earlier, each individual is given a percentage of the allocation for the project. Um, most, most of the time it defaults to 100%, but some PIs will be more hands-on and they'll say, okay, you can use 10% or you can use 100,000 hours or whatever, um, however they want to manage their um, quotas. If you run out of time for your particular um, account, um, 
your jobs will go into the scavenger queue. Um, and then you have to contact your PI and request uh, an increase in your percentage or a number of hours so that you can get back out of the scavenger queue into a higher priority queue. If the entire project or repo runs out of time, then the PI has to contact DOE, um, Office of Science Allocation Managers, and request additional time from them. Um, typically, each office will keep some time in reserve from what they've been given at the beginning of the year for, to allocate to new projects or for projects that go over their time. Um, but again, uh, if your repo is out of time and you're waiting to hear back from DOE, uh, the jobs will go into scavenger queue at a low priority. Um, so you can still submit jobs, you just have to wait longer for them. Okay, long laundry list of help links. Uh, all having to do with uh, allocations and accounts, et cetera. Um, you can contact us via phone. Um, if, since there's only two of us in account and allocation support, if we get busy or I'm in here giving a presentation and I'm not at the phone, um, you'll get a message that says, please go to the help desk and submit a trouble ticket. Are there any questions? So um, we will be here for the summer, and uh, our PI um, set, set an account for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I received the uh, property mm -hmm. issues policy, and, and so I signed that. And um, so I, for me, it's all set up. Um, I can use, I can uh, access the system now. For my student, um, she she received the the property use policy. She signed it, but uh, she hasn't received the, the password uh, reset uh, email. Uh, what, what is the reason? Or it depends. Okay. <laughs> I'd have to look at her account to see what's going on. Uh, when was the last time you checked your email? The last, last day, I didn't Okay, so I, I, I did a few forms this morning. Okay. Uh, a few accounts got approved this morning, so when you get a chance, you can go back to check your email. Or you can see me afterwards and I can, I can check online for you. Okay. 